طلب عينك احنا جينا سيد تقبل مشينا والدعاء طلب عينك احنا جينا سيد تقبل مشينا والدعاء قلبي عنك ما تخلى في الارض بالجنة طلع كربلاء As officials have stated, this year they are expecting 28, 27 to 28 million to enter Karbala. This year, when you talk to people, they say it's more packed than last year. Hopefully, we can get to understand why Arba'in is so great and why every year people are flocking millions after millions and more every year. Why do they do that? And how do they do it with such compassion and such generosity and such selflessness? Tonight we have with us, but before that, we'll go into a short break and we'll be back very shortly before I introduce my guest. Brothers and sisters, once again, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We are live from the holy city of Karbala covering the great Arba'in pilgrimage and bringing to you the atmosphere prior to the day of Arba'in. Tomorrow is the uh, blessed day of Arba'in where the believers are gathered in the holy city of Karbala to commemorate the 40th day after the martyrdom of Imam Al Hussein. Peace and blessings be upon him. As you can hear, uh, the sirens are behind, uh, behind me right now. Uh, Hopefully, inshallah, nothing has happened. Um, it's probably something minor. But today I have with me a very special guest uh, from the UK, Dr. Shabir Tijani. Habibi Mullah. Well, How are you? Assalamu alaikum. Very well, thank you. How you good? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. How did you find the walk to Karbala? Um, it was challenging. Yeah. First, I found the walk. Um, uh -huh. And uh, there, was a lot, there was a bit of a, a sickness bug going around, so I caught the same thing. So. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. They say whenever there's a challenge, there's acceptance. So Alhamdulillah, inshallah, definitely. Yeah, hopefully the ziyarat's accepted. Definitely. Why walk this year instead of... Uh, normally when I come, I come with very few days, so I'm five, five or six days. So generally what tends to happen is I spend the day traveling, come straight to Karbala, and then I have programs and, and so forth. Um, but this year, Alhamdulillah, we have ten days. So I came early, came to Najaf, and then... MashaAllah, nice. Now a lot of people when uh, when they speak about walking, uh, they mention the fact that when you're walking, remember the footsteps of Zainab? Yes. And remember the footsteps of the family of Mahsana yeah. alayhi salam. Um, is that true? Do we, is, is it important to remember those steps? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Even before we set off, one of the first things I said to myself and to my family was, um, when you're walking, every step you're taking, just remember the the footsteps of Sayyidina Zainab, Imam Zainab Abdin alayhi salam, and imagine the trials and the troubles that they went through. Yes. Even when I was sick and not feeling very well, that's what kept me going. It's actually remembering and remembering their patience and their sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Now, I have to ask you because you're a reciter. Yeah. Now, when you come to Karbala, you find a lot of rhythms, a lot of styles, a lot of. Yeah. Um, types of nohas that you don't even hear anywhere across the world except for Arba'in. Yeah. Now, uh, from a reciter's point of view, how do you view this? I find it amazing. I find yeah? It amazing that so Isn't it many, weird? No, I mean, I think if it was the first time I was here, it probably would be a bit weird. But yeah. because I've become used to it, and plus, in our own recitations, we have a lot of different styles as well. Yeah. So, for me, it's kind of, it's very stimulating. You listen to it. Yeah. And you join in and you see the way that different communities, different people from around the world grieve and commemorate the martyrdom of Mark Hussein and the Arabian. Yeah. Now, uh, 
the thing is, a lot of people when when they hear the Hussein Hussein going on, uh, they think it was a dance. And yesterday, I I got a text message uh, after the live show uh, at night. Uh, there was a monkey passing by, and I had that. So after the show, I got a text. She was like, "Is that music in the background? Is that something? You know, is it appropriate to merge that kind of?" Recitation with Ahlul Bayt alayhim is salam or is that totally fine? Well, the thing, the thing that I would say is that um, anything that brings you closer spiritually to the Ahlul Bayt, to Imam Hussain alayhi salam, I find that it should, it's acceptable. And plus, a lot of these things that are happening here have been passed through the Maraja and the Ulama, and they've been vetted and, and they've been asked whether it's, it's acceptable. I'm sure, except, especially in places like, for example, we have Iranian mokibs that go through here and they have um, the loudest sound systems that I've ever heard. Yeah. And you can hear them from the other side of Karbala. Yeah. And, you know, in a place like Iran, if this, if this was not an acceptable thing, then I'm sure they would have been, they'd have been picked up a long time ago. Yeah. So, so for me, it's anything that brings you close to the Imam, anything that stimulates your mind and your heart to get close to the Ahlul Bayt, is acceptable. Mm -hmm. Now, what kind of things, speaking of bringing you closer to the Imam, what kind of things during Arba'in bring you closer to the Imam of our time, especially Imam Hussain alayhi salam? So, I mean, when you go to the shrine of Imam Hussain alayhi salam, mm -hmm. Abu Fadl Abbas alayhi salam, yes. you remember what happened to them, you remember their sacrifice, and you remember the fact that actually the Imam of your time is actually still crying and grieving for them. And then you take Al Ziyarat al Nahya, for example, which was written by the 12th Imam. Yes. Um, and read through it, read the translations, it brings you very close because the Imam is grieving more than any of us. And our grief can, is only a drop in the ocean. Yes, grief. absolutely. So when we remember his grief, we think of our own grief and then remember his grief, that brings me closer to the Imam straight away. Mm -hmm. So, speaking of uh, the, the tear of the eye, um, when you walk to Karbala, as you mentioned earlier, um, we always see people who are remembering Zainab, uh, maybe Zainab having the flag saying Ya Zainab, having nohas about Zainab uh, and also you see the tear in the eye and at the same time you see people smiling when they walk. I've seen this a lot, you know, from old people to young people. Sometimes the old smile when they're walking, sometimes the old cry and the same thing goes for the young. Now, why cry? And have have you been have you been since that moment where you I, smile I, yeah. and then you cry? And I, I've have seen it myself. What I would say is that the walk itself is different for different people. The intention, the the kind of the mindset for the walk is different for different people. Um, for some people, it's it's purely all grief and and nothing else. For other people, it's a, a mode to self-realization. You know, you put yourself through the challenge, through the hardship of the walk, and at the end of the day, at the end of the walk, you're looking to find the Imam. So, the walk in itself is quite challenging. So people find their own ways of coping with that challenge and the stress of the walk. And sometimes, you know, they have they're with their companions and their friends, and different at different points of the of the walk, they may have different emotions. So, yeah. so I, I feel you know that that's completely acceptable. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to speak about uh, you arriving at Karbala. Uh, the first time walking, how do you find security? How do you find the services? Uh, if we focus on security and services, uh, yeah. and then we can talk about the rest. Yeah, yeah. So security is extremely tight here, obviously, as you'd, as you'd expect. Um, and the the service. I mean, if you look at the the people, the local people here who serve the zawars, it's just completely mind-boggling that they actually give everything they have in order to provide food, provide shelter for the zayareen. Yeah. Um, but I mean, when you have 30 million people, any security force in the world <laughs> cannot Can manage that. Yeah. So, that, mashallah, they're doing a great job, but you know, I don't think it's possible to, to, to manage all of these people with one security force. Yeah. So, inshallah, let's pray that everyone remains safe here. Inshallah, and, inshallah. And pray that there isn't any, any problems during the, the during, because this year it's more packed than I've ever seen it before. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're telling me this year is more packed than last year. Um, and what's interesting about this year, um, not only it's a regular Arba'in, but it's a Friday as well. Yeah. So it, it makes us hope, you know. Yeah, you yeah. know when, when there's when there's that even that slightest chance of hope yeah. uh, within the heart, you know, it's a Friday. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, it's, yeah. But you know, inshallah, we can we pray uh, we pray we that pray. it could be a very special year this year. Absolutely. Uh, and what's also interesting, it's um, 
a lot of people have arrived from outside cities. Yesterday, I had uh, some guy telling me that his uncle walked from Kuwait hmm. all the way from Kuwait to Iraq nonstop. Yeah. Like he would stop for rest, of yeah, course, yeah. stop to eat, uh, but never got a cab, never took a car, never took a ride Amazing. straight to Karbala. Amazing, mashallah. That's almost. 890 kilometers 900 and something kilometers yeah so it's 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 huge yeah now speaking of your first experience when you walked mm. did you see the massage places i saw yeah 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 there's a, were a they were they good places so, yeah i never stopped for one but uh -huh. i saw i saw what they were doing to me it looked quite painful so i didn't, yeah? I didn't actually stop no uh, but but they the every few steps every every few poles you would see people massaging feet massaging backs Alhamdulillah, they, they really take care of the Zawar here. Mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah. Now, uh, your experience in Karbala, if you want to talk about it during uh, regular seasons and then during Arba'in. Yeah. There's a big difference. Absolutely, yeah. But the, there's one difference that really uh, brings the one closer to Hassan Ali Islam. And that's the emotion that's found in the air, in the atmosphere yeah. of, uh, yeah. of Arba'in. Um, although across the year you do get emotional with the Imam, mm -hmm. it depends on the occasion you're there. Yeah. Um, but if you can compare a couple of things, two, one or two things about Arba'in to the, to the rest of the year. Um, well, I've come at different times of the year. I've come in Sha'aban, yeah, Sha yeah. so for me then it was a completely different atmosphere. It was, you know, everybody was having a good time. I've come in first Ashra for the first 10 days of Muharram. It's not as packed, but again, there's a lot of yeah. sorrow and grief in the air. And then Arba'in is just something completely different. Arba'in is just, just people just so many loves of the Ahlul Bayt millions and millions and millions of people and you just bounce energy from each other and obviously the shrines there is just a magnet which pulls you all in yeah it's just amazing to see so it's completely different feeling to different times of the year but Arabian for sure is probably the most intense time I would say yeah why it's just the pure number of people number one number two like you said there's there's a different feel in the air you get this as, for as long as you're here, you just feel nothing but grief and mm -hmm. sorrow and everyone else is in the same mood. You see the shrines, everyone's just flocking towards the shrines. It's completely different to anything else I've ever experienced. Mm -hmm. Now as a doctor, do you have fear when you eat from a mokib or do you have fear that if you're sick, where are you going to go? Yeah, uh, you know, I mean, I, 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 take was some sick. Medicine. I was sick this year. Yeah. Do you bring uh, meds with you or do you just rely on the meds here? Well, I didn't, but luckily my, my wife did. Oh, so, okay, right. so, so that was actually a saving grace. But um, yeah, I, I mean, what you have to do is just give, leave everything in the hands of the Imam. There's nothing you can do. I mean, you have to stop and eat. Whether you eat in the hotel or eat at Mokib, the chances of problems with the food is the same with both places. So you just, you just pray that everything's okay and so just I'm, continue. Tell us some medical tips medical tips if I knew that I would have used it myself but I guess the main thing is to I try and stay away from meat mm -hmm. so that's the first thing I do try and stay what away kind from of meat any meat and Chicken, in general lamb whatever yeah in general uh, the other thing I try and do is that's something stay away difficult from, for the Arabs yeah stay away from dairy ah, milk yeah. yeah okay yeah because uh, sometimes not pasteurized properly uh, those are the two main things, and uh, if you if you the find the two main would, things that are served in the mokib yeah, is yeah. meat and, and dairy. Yeah, yeah. So the only thing I'd usually have is 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 tea and then shorba. Ah, uh -huh, shorba in early mornings. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's kind of my staple. That's the only thing I eat. That's it. Mokibs, yeah. Where you get your nutrition from? That, yeah. That's probably why, why you're sick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably. Um, but you know, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alamin. Uh, the, the, the other uh, idea that I want to talk about is the atmosphere that we're seeing in the screen right now. Yeah. When someone from abroad, you know, uh, you can't live here, you know, due to your occupation yeah. and your job. Uh, but for someone living in abroad, and he's not able to come and view what you're seeing right now. Yeah. What would be his feelings? Well, what I would say is number one, you'd be amazed at the intensity in the air. You can't feel that from the TV screen. It's just nothing but pure raw, raw emotion. Everybody's chanting and, and crying and reciting and, and you can't feel that from a TV screen. And also, it's kind of, when you're in Karbala, just the, 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 the 
the feel in the air, that emotion that, that you feel in the air, you can't get from the TV screen. What I would say to them is that just look at how many millions of people come every year. If it was something that they could get from a TV screen, they wouldn't be coming. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. That, that was a very good point you made, yeah. but inshallah we'll continue this, but after the short break, so let's do that. Respective viewers, do stay tuned. For, we'll be back very shortly after the short break. Respective viewers, welcome back. Hope you inshallah enjoyed uh, that short report live, exclusively live uh, from the Holy Shrines of Karbala during the Great Arba'in pilgrimage. You know, everyone here uh, is gathered under the banner of Labbaikya, Hussein Labbaikya Mawla. And Labbaikya Mawla was the uh, title of the album released on the first of Muharram by Shabir Tijani. Welcome back. Thank How are you, good doctor? Very good to have you. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Uh, now, I know you've prepared some uh, nohas for us. Yes. Uh, that relate to our mind. So, yeah. you know, we're looking forward for that. Uh, but before we get into noha, I want you to comment um, for the people that can't, couldn't make it this year, yeah. um, you know, so they can feel uh, the spirituality of, of being here, yeah. uh, but yet at the comfort of their homes. So, it would be good if we can have some inserts uh, yeah. as well uh, as. Uh, doctor's uh, yeah, comments. Just looking down at the screen, inshallah, I'm sure we'll have some, some views of the shrine itself mm -hmm. from inside the shrine. But as soon as you go in, all you can see, well, even before you get in, you just see a flood of people. Um, when you try to get through the gates to get into the shrine, you, sometimes you can't even do that. But as you can see in the, in the pictures, there's mokibs that are passing through. You see that they're actually separated with barriers. Yeah. So as they're walking through, you see those strings on either side of them and then there's a platform where the reciter is standing and each mokib has their own flavor, their own yeah. way of recitation. Yeah. Each language, each culture has a different way of, of, of doing the grieving and the ma'atum for Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. And from each and every single one, mentally and, and physically, you feel filled with grief and sorrow. Yeah. So for those of you who haven't been able to make it, inshallah, may Allah give you the visitation of Imam Hussein soon. And may you especially get to visit during the time of Arba'in because these sort of mokibs you don't get at any other time of the year. You only get it for Arba'in. So this year, normally what happens is that you get the mokibs on Arba'in night, which is actually tonight. Yeah. But the mokibs this year started from last night. And the reason for that, I think, is because there's a lot more mokibs to go through the Haram. Oh, yeah. So that's why they've had to spread them out a bit more. So my, my um, recitation was last night with a Tanzanian mokib. Yeah. But there's mokibs that have gone from this morning, from early as like 6, 5 a.m. Wow. Through the day, they'll be going through the night until tomorrow morning. So just goes to show you what sort of, what sort of emotion there must be in the shrine. Wow. And to be honest with you, because of these mokibs passing through, to get space to even get inside the shrine is difficult. So Very difficult. Especially so tonight. Tonight, if you don't get into the shrine earlier, for Maghrib, but like for you, you won't get in. You can't get in. Unless you're you part of the mokibs where, where you can get through, but otherwise you wouldn't be able to get in yeah. at all. And also, um, the mokib that are going through, um, this year they've uh, estimated, because last year there were around 730 mokib. Yeah. This year they're estimating 700 and so sorry, 7,000, yeah. 800 and something yeah. Yeah. Um And from them, you got the mokibs that come in yeah, and the yeah, mokibs yeah. that serve. Yeah, yeah. And also, it's, it's, uh, That's it's amazing. It's, 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 it's amazing how we, yeah. can, how we can, you know, Fathom think it, about yeah. it. You know, you it's, it's mashallah. Mashallah. May Imam protect them all and, and keep them all, all safe because obviously, with the world the way it is at the moment and the persecutions of the loves of the Ahlul Bayt, um, you know, this is, this is uh, inshallah, we pray for their safety, inshallah. Inshallah, I mean, hopefully everyone is safe around the world because yeah. honestly, when you love Imam Hussain alayhi salam, unfortunately, people have looked at it as a way of, you know what, if I, if I, if I love this person, I'm going to be in affliction, hmm. you know, I'm, I'm there's harm gonna yeah. reach me, but at the same time, you're loving an individual who sacrificed everything he has for you. Yeah. And that's what we need to think about. Yeah. Uh, now, if you can bless us with a few verses uh, yeah. from which poem you were trying to It's called today? On Our Way. Uh huh, okay. It's uh, regarding the walk. So, um, this was actually written specifically for the walk. 
So inshallah, because this show is more about the walk to Karbala, yes. I hope the listeners at home uh, pay attention and get a feel of what it's like. Inshallah. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Allahumma sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Karbala, we are on our way to you. Ya Hussein, we want to see your dome soon. Walking upon the angels' wings, leaving behind everything. Seventy-five kilometers on our way to the King of Kings. The air is filled with so much love. The stars shine on us from above. This is our call. To everyone, raise up your hands and say as one, La Baik Ya Hussein, Karbala, we are on our way to you. Ya Hussein, we want to see your dawn soon. The old and frail children are here walking this road without a fear. We shout and call out Yah Hussein, beating our chests and shedding tears. So what if we threatened with death? We'll call his name with every breath. This is our call. To everyone, raise up your hand and say as one, La Baik Ya Hussein, Karbala, we are on our way to you. Ya Hussein, we want to see your dome soon. And according to the hadith, when Imam Al Hussein was born, Lady Fatima was informed, was told about his sacrifice by the Holy Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him. And at that time, she asked her father, will anybody be there to cry for him? And at that time, the Holy Prophet said to her that none of us will be there to grieve and mourn over him, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will create a, a nation. And we are that nation, a nation to cry for him. So from that day onwards, Bibi Fatima to Zahra Salamullah Alayha had been praying for us and still prays for us until this day. For us, O Fatima had prayed, that is the reason we were made, created to cry for Hussein. On that day, we'd come to his aid, we'll not stop in service to him. Lives. This is our call to everyone. Raise up your hands and say as one, La Baik Ya Hussein Karbala, we are on our way to you. Ya Hussein, we want to see your dome soon. Step after step. Mile after mile, we're happy to face any trials. The aching limbs, the burning joints, we'll be there in a little while. We're yearning just to see the dawn, as if we are returning home. This is our call to everyone. Raise up your hands and say as one, La Baik Ya Hussein, Karbala, we are on our way to you. Ya Hussein, we want to see your dawn soon. And the next verse in particular is for the viewers at home. So you get an idea or, or a flavor of what it's like when you reach Karbala. When you get to that final post and you see the holy shrines in Bain al-Haramain. 
As we lay eyes upon your dome, we start to shake right to the bone. Speechless, we just look on in awe. We can't control the tears that flow. Standing in vain, no harmain between our bus and you, Hussein. This is our call. To everyone, raise up your hands and say as one, La Baik Ya Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa achil fajr. Beautiful recitation, you know, when, when to hear uh, the the actual feelings of what the mm. Za'ar goes through yeah. are with the ones who are at home who haven't seen Karbala and then they reach Karbala. It's, um, it's uh, it's very emotional at the same time. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. Thank you, Thank you know, very it's, much. It's, it takes dedication to do what you do. Alhamdulillah. And inshallah, Alhamdulillah. may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you the will to continue serving Ahlul Bayt uh, in the way you do. Thank you very much once again. Uh, respective viewers, thank you very much for tuning in. Hopefully, inshallah, we can uh, learn from individuals like Shabir and from individuals around the world uh, to serve Ahlul Bayt and to always never forget the Imam of our time in our du'as. Thank you very much. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.